and I'm coming back after the video is ended. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Here for this week, I'm attending the Innovation Week, an intensive week that's going to teach us about sustainability, innovation, and more. I feel great about it because this is a great opportunity to meet new students and hear interesting topics. Uh, I'm joining the Basement Innovation Week, which is a very exciting thing. And uh, here I get to connect to people from all over the place and also learn a lot about innovation. I'm currently pursuing my master's at the Rotterdam Business School. Yeah, we're here to learn about innovation. We have an intensive week of um, just learning and hearing from different guest speakers and lecturers. A good takeaway that I can take from this week is how organizations can try to implement an innovative atmosphere so that everyone within the team feels okay to share any ideas that they may have or different ways that they can improve products or the performance of products that they already provide. I'm doing my master's in consultancy and entrepreneurship. Uh, personally, I'm very passionate about change management, especially in big organizations. And I'm surprised that it's actually possible this week I learned it. So I hope that one day I'll be able to implement my knowledge. I'm a professor at the Federal University of Minas Gerais. And I'm here to talk about disruptive innovation and how disruptive events can trigger innovation. The Innovation Week is wonderful. We discuss innovation from different perspectives and the networking is amazing. I think there are a lot of great takeaways from this week, but if I could share one, it's how you can use creativity and communication to transform your business from the bottom to the top of it. So I'm feeling excited because it's we have a lot of people here, like more than 50, 60 people. And um, it's really interesting to have people from 20 to 50 or to 40 and exchange the experience and stuff. I'm a professor in innovation management and corporate entrepreneurship at Worms University of Applied Sciences. And I'm also innovation manager at Lufthansa. But what you could expect from this event is uh, meeting a lot of interesting people, uh, getting to know different uh, dimensions and different perspectives on basically the same issue all around innovation. Uh, and I think that's very, very important. I do believe that this is the future of education, to offer practical experience, to offer real-life situations, to offer the chance for the students to exchange ideas, to exchange mindset, to exchange perspectives, because they are right now exposed to people from more than 30 different countries, uh, six different universities. So I do believe that this is the future for business education. Okay. So this video gives a bit of an impression about what our program is like and, and what you'll be doing. Well, I'll be sharing you more details, uh, but let me first um, introduce myself. Um, well, my name is Marcel. I'm one of the few Dutch lecturers in the team. We're a rel relatively small team. We're about 10 lecturers and our program has about a, a hundred students at the moment that is entering every cohort. Um, I'm part-time involved in the school, so I'm mostly involved in teaching topics around consultancy. And next to that, I'm also involved in a small consultancy for myself. Um, but I really like the combination. And there's actually quite a number of teachers and lecturers that we have in the program that have both are still operating in the field and are also really enjoying teaching. So could you let me know in the chat a little bit about you, some of your background? What, have you just finished a bachelor's? Have you working experience? What about you and what are you looking for? Could you share something in the chat? Because we're a small group, so I think we could have a bit of a talk about that. I see that other people have joined. Welcome to the others that have just joined. So please let us know in the chat something about you. What have you done before? And what are you looking for in this program? Okay, Tino says, in my last academic year of Hogeschool Utrecht, okay, doing a Bachelor in Creative Business. Interesting, so you're looking for a follow-up master program. 
And then I suppose you're looking for the program in starting September 25. Okay, what about the others? Thanks, Tino. Okay, Demi says she finished a Bachelor of Business Administration two years ago, is now working. Okay, nice. And now you're looking to further enhance your skills and knowledge and back into a one-year full-time program, right? At least that's what this program is. It's a one-year full-time program. Okay, Guido says, I'm in the last half year of my study, started your own company two years ago, would love to learn more of this world. Nice. So then are you looking to join us in February? Because we have two intakes per year. So there's a September a cohort is starting and we have a cohort starting in February. So every six months. And usually people that just have finished their bachelors, they come into the program in September and people who are not tied to the schedule of the academic year come in um in february sometimes then christina says i'm finishing my tourism management bachelor now and i will start in february with this master very nice and demi says yes yeah so okay good nice you know and in terms of our students we have a broad mix of students part of the students have just finished their bachelors and are looking for a master's immediately after um and we also have a, 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 i would say probably at least half of the students they have some working experience uh, like demi said she has two years working experience and we have people with up to 15 years of working experience just to give you an an idea and we have one example of an orthopedic surgeon from brazil that was two years ago and she had 25 years of working experience in the medical field came, wanted to move to europe did this program and really wanted to shift from the medical profession into a business profession. So we have a very broad range of students, which makes it a very interesting dynamic in the classroom. So people come from various backgrounds, for, from a very clear business bachelor uh, to um, all sorts of other backgrounds. Let's see, Mandi says, a bachelor of information systems and management from Indonesia. Nice experience in procurement and consulting business business consultants nice and then you'll start next september because of my work right right okay anybody else who wants to share something about themselves before we dive into the details of the program All right. Well, then let me explain a little bit more. Oh, the message by Armand. Mechanical engineering. Nice. Finished an MBA already or a master's of business. Willing to start your own business as entrepreneur. Nice. Nice. Thanks a lot, guys. So here on the slide, you see what our main goal is as MCE program. We want to prepare students to navigate the VUCA world, the world that is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And our focus is on creative solutions to complex problems. So basically, it means that if you're graduated from our program, from our one-year program, that you are ready, expected to become a world-class problem solver. That's, for, for us, the overarching. And this very theme of being a problem solver is actually, for us, also the combination and the link between entrepreneurship and consultancy. Because they seem like two different worlds. But if you think about it, a consultant is solving a problem for a client. But an entrepreneur is actually also a problem solving. Solving a problem that he or she sees in the market and is solving the problem by offering a product or a, solu or a, or a service. So basically, both consultants and entrepreneurs, and actually that world is sometimes a bit merging also already. So the distinction is becoming also a little bit more fluid. Um, the theme and the link between these two groups of people, the two professions, as you could say, is problem solving. So our goal with the program is to turn you into a world-class problem solver. And we do this in, that in many different ways, but everything you will be doing is very practical. So the, pro the purpose of our program is to combine these two fields, consulting and entrepreneurships, and... Um, looking at both the consulting perspective and also looking for opportunities to fulfill societal needs as an entrepreneur 
in other words, from both perspectives, solving problems that are there outside in the market. And we do that in line with the world's biggest companies. And we mean the type of skills that we're teaching you are in line with, you know, you have these overviews of the top 10 skills required for the future. Here you see one by the World Economic Forum. They say the top 10, 2025, and you see the whole list, analytical thinking, active learning, complex problem solving, critical thinking, and so on. And if we would look and compare that to our program, we tick actually a lot of these boxes. So with our program, we, try, we redesign the program every three years, roughly, and we really want to stay on top of things and really stay close connected to what the market is actually asking. There's another example, a list of McKinsey. And we tick a lot of the boxes here, not all of them, but a lot of the boxes. So our, our program is really strongly tied into the professional field. There's an advisory board of a number of companies and clients that we work with that we have and that are involved in building and enhancing and improving the program continuously. Um, here you see on the slide, you see skills, knowledge, knowledge skills and attitudes, and that's Everything we do in a program is structured around a, a particular KSA. And you see there's five KSA related to knowledge, five skills, and five attitudes. And throughout all the modules that we offer, this is basically what you will, <clears throat> what you will be learning. And they all connect into this theme again of problem solving, creative, complex problem solving. Um, well, I, just to name a few, technology, the use and design, sustainable business management, project management. You see consultancy, that's what I'm mostly involved in. Business strategy and innovation, I'm also involved in that. And then you see skills, professional communication and networking, systems thinking, research, analysis, diagnosis, leadership, critical thinking, and then the attitudes that, are, that we want to show, learn, but also that we really use in um, developing the curriculum is awareness, making it happen, attitude, growth mindset, forward thinking, and design mindset. So those are some of the key SA that you will be learning. So every module builds up to one or multiple of these key SA. Now, this is the program. This is what the program looks like. Um, so I said we have two entry points a year one in september that's the that's the, the the timeline at the top and one in february here you see the one with the 22 23 dates and of course if you're thinking of starting in september next year september 25 then you would follow the top line and fill in 25 and so on and the way our program is currently structured is like this we are actually redesigning the curriculum. So in September 25, the curriculum might have changed already, but this is the current curriculum. And it basically has three parts. So I'll talk you through it. You don't have to know all the details, um, but it starts on the left-hand side with the design mindset. So that's one program, one module that everybody follows at the same time in a specific format to get everybody basically on the same page. Then there's a study week, you have to hand in assignments and so on. And then there's four core modules. And those are all six ECs. You see strategy and innovation, leading transformation and consulting. That's the one that I'm teaching. Project management and responsible business management. So this is basically giving you all the ingredients, all the content, all the details that you need. At the top, you see business solution design. That's a, that's a course that runs throughout the year. This is basically leading up to your final thesis. But we don't call it a thesis. We call it a BSR, a business solution report. And business solution design is basically a, a module that helps you step by step throughout the process, finding a problem for a company. You'll be finding a real problem for a real company on, on your own, you'll be doing your, your, your project on it, and it will result in your BSR defense at the end, the red bar, and that's the final component of your program. Well, the business solution design is supported by research design, so, you, so dependent on your background, you will have more or less background in research, so you'll be taught how to do proper research, and then 
after the core modules that I just mentioned, the four core modules, you will have some electives that you can choose. And the elective usually depends on, do you want to go more into the consulting direct directory or more towards entrepreneurship? There are several electives that you can choose from. So I hope this roughly explains the way the curriculum looks like. And once again, this is the current curriculum. If you start in February, it will still look like this. If you start in September, there might have been some changes. Um, if you have questions, by the way, don't hesitate to ask them. Please put them in the public chat. Then I can see them and then I can answer them. Okay. This is the team. This is not exactly up to date because the team has changed recently, but we are, it's not so much about the individual people, but we are a small team and we are all, we all have a lot of experience actually in the field. Some people are now full-time lecturers, some are part-time like myself, but we work very closely together. And the whole program is very integrated. So it's not that you have specific separate courses. Everything works seamlessly together. Like, the stuff that we talk about here in the core modules, like strategy and innovation, leading transformation and consulting, everything links back into the business solution design, which is your ultimate final project that you will deliver. Now, I'm skipping this. So we like to be connected to the real world, so to speak, as much as we can. So you will be doing a lot of assignments for, for actual clients, actual companies. Um, we have no written exams. There's only assignments. In cases, individual, and in other cases, there will be group assignments. So every exam is basically either a report, a portfolio, a presentation, um, whatever it is. We use guest speakers a lot. Here you see some examples on the screen. Uh, we do field visits. Um, you, I just showed you a video, which is from our Business Innovation Week. That's a full week. Out of, then you don't have any regular classes. A few times a year, we have a special theme week. And then you'll be doing field visits. There's seminars. There's guest speakers. Um, so we really are trying to, to tie the whole program closely connected to um, the actual working field. One of the ways of learning is what we call a living lab. So project management, the project management module is mostly around a living lab format, which means um, throughout a period of like two months, two and a half months, you'll be working on a project for a client. And in some cases, you you will be even at the office or at the premises of the client, working very closely together with the client um, on you know applying the the problem solving methodologies that you've learned and here you see some of the examples of companies that we have worked with the thrive institute worth which is an it company here in the netherlands grounds is a company here in rotterdam so we closely work together making um, active uh, lessons there's design sprint so in the design mindset you'll be learning everything about design thinking and also particularly learning methodologies and ways of thinking and doing that you will apply in all your group work, basically. We use the concept of pressure cookers. Like every year you have at least one pressure cooker, which basically is a week long project and you'll get a problem. You get presented with a problem on Monday morning and throughout the whole week, you you will be in school every single day and you'll be working towards a, a final recommendation a solution that you have to present on friday afternoon and here you see a list of some of the companies and the clients that we work with during the recent pressure cookers um 2023 was the johan cruyff arena the vegetarian butcher impact center um solar carports there's unilever there's all sorts of companies that we are working with then Business Innovation Week, I just talked about that. That was the video was from that, basically. And we also work a lot with students and universities from abroad. Like the pressure cooker, usually there's three, four other universities that will be coming for a week. So you have guest lecturers from other universities, students from other universities. So the, our, our own student population is very mixed in terms of nationality, age, and so on. And during these weeks, it will be even more diverse because there will be people who we are not regular studying with. So you will have mixed groups with them also. 
So basically our master in consultancy and entrepreneurship at the Rotterdam Business School is designed for future oriented problem solver professionals. And I think the question is, is that you? Um, well, this is basically what I wanted to share with you. Not all the details. There's a lot you could probably read on the website. Um, I wanted to give you this overview and I will now open up the floor for questions. I see that there are some questions in the chat already. That's great. I will look at them and answer them. And if you have more questions, please put them in the chat. Okay, Tino asks, are the courses taught in person or online? They will all be online. Uh, sorry, in person. <laughs> the courses will be in person. So you'll be required to attend the school nearly every day. It's a full-time program. Um, we used to have online classes, of course, a few years ago during COVID, but normally the courses are taught in person. And in person could mean actually here in the school at Kralingse Zoom in Rotterdam, or sometimes it's at the office of a client, but it's all in person. Um, question from Christina. If we start from February, do we have a summer break or do we continue for one year straight? Yeah, great question. Yes, you will have a summer break. So if you start from September, the end, the year ends in June. So your BSR defense will be the end of June. So you will have the summer break. And for the, um, for the February cohort, it's the same, but then the break. Uh, so for the September cohort, the break is basically after the year, you could say you start in September, but you end in June. If you are in the February cohort, the break is just in the middle. So you have classes from February till the end of June, sometimes early July. And then you have just a summer break. And at the beginning of September, you continue with, with the program. Uh, Demi says, how many contact hours will there be per week in the current curriculum that will be between 20 to 30? So that's quite a lot. And, you know, the curriculum will be redesigned. Then the contact hours then will be reduced. It will not reduce the study load. So it's still a full time program. But we if you are thinking of starting in September, then the contact hours will be reduced. We don't know exactly what it will look like, but just have an idea. Um, are there any other questions? Any other thing you would like to know? All right, Armand says there's an English proficiency requirement on the website. Yes. Does it apply to someone who already studied a course in English in the Netherlands? No, it only applies to students from abroad. If you have like a regular bachelor from a Dutch University of Applied Sciences, then you have automatically met the English requirement. So Armand, did you study, did you do already an, an HBO uh, program here in the Netherlands? So you don't even have to have had a program in English. So any regular HBO program in the Netherlands, so University of Applied Sciences, any program there will automatically qualify you. So you don't have to do any tests and you don't have to prove it. Okay, HBO MBA in English, yeah, that's fine. But if you're from abroad, particularly outside the European Union, there is a proficiency test, but that's handled by our Office of International Relations. So with application, when you apply, you will be guided in the right direction. Um, Tino says, regarding the requirements to sign up for the master, is a business-related bachelor like creative business sufficient or do you need to be a, to do a pre-master? I'm not 100% sure about the answer, but I think in general, any business-related program from the Netherlands makes you uh, be able to apply. Usually the pre-master is only needed if you're from outside the European, European Union and you don't have any business experience or education. So I would think, I would assume that for creative business that that will be sufficient. Um, if you really wanna be sure, I would, I suggest you ask this question to the Office of International Affairs. So you, so you signed up, you found this program and you signed up. If you contact the, that department, they will be able to give you a hundred percent answer to that question.
Are there any other questions? Okay, if there's no further questions, then thank you very much for listening. I hope this was clear and helpful in your decision process. So perhaps I'll see you in February or September. Um, if you still have questions, I will stick around for a couple of minutes so you could still ask your questions if you want to. Um, and otherwise, good luck and enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Mandy. Have a nice day. You too. So I'll stick around for a few more minutes. If you have more questions, fine. And otherwise, enjoy the rest of the day. And I'll maybe see you in the program later on. Oh, I see there's another question from Arman. I hope you're still there. Is there an admission officer, medewerker, who I can visit in person? Um, well, yeah, you could come to the school. Um, you could contact any admission officer. They they are, I think they are here at Kalingse Zone. So if you want to have a meeting with them in person, you could just contact them and ask for it. Uh, that'll be fine. And then you can ask some specific questions. Um, yeah, just walking in the school without any appointment with any of the lectures, it really, because, you know, there's part-time lectures, not everybody is in the school every day, neither am I. Um, so I think the best way, if you have specific questions or want to see the school, is contact the admissions office and ask if you can come by. Or if you have a question i can give you my email address i'll type um, i'll type my email address just send me an email and then we could get in touch or whatever so you can stay connected to me if you want to and maybe i can answer your questions so any other questions armand Okay, great. Okay, Arman, have a nice day. And feel free to contact me. And we might see you at the program. I'm ending the webinar here because I think you are the last in the room. Yeah, I'm ending the webinar here. Bye-bye.